In this video, we're going to discuss whether or not Topaz's new program, Photo AI, is better than other programs and if it's a good automated system for editing your photos. Can we make these photos any better? All right, so what's going on, guys? I'm Chris Luckenbach, Chris Luck Photo on Instagram and all my other social media. And we're just going to jump right into it. I got these four images on Photoshop that we're going to be looking at. It's going to be a bear, the Aurora, a puffin and a moose. Now, these are not amazing shots. In fact, some of them are old. Some of them are just purposely bad, but uh, especially this moose. Funny story behind that. But let's start with the bear. I already did minor adjustments on these just so we can get this moving along pretty good for you guys. And no time is money. You can see that this 12,800 ISO shot definitely has some noise. And what I'm gonna do first since I'm in Photoshop is just convert this for a smart filter. And we are good. I'm gonna hit filter, Topaz, Photo AI. Be sure to stick around for the end of the video. I'll show you how to install the program if you don't know how yet. So when you first open a program, it's going to do this autopilot settings, subject detective, no faces, even though there kind of is a bare face. It says that subjects in focus, so you don't need to use sharpen. It's good image quality, so you don't need to use the enhance. And uh, the only thing it's saying here is it's high noise, which I can agree on. Let's full screen this and see what it looks like side by side here. So it definitely looks like the noise is pretty much gone. It's pretty impressive. Let's zoom in here all the way. Definitely less noise. It does look pretty good. That's an easy image. Now we're in Photoshop. We can discuss the before and after. Looks the same, so the program does its job. Gives you an accurate representation of what the photo is gonna look like from Topaz in the Photoshop or Lightroom, however you want to edit your photos. Moving on to the Aurora. Now, this was a tricky shot because the Canon R5 is a great camera, but I don't think it's the best camera for uh, astrophotography. The 45 megapixels is quite a bit. You can see this crazy banding here, and I purposely chose this photo because it's really rough on the image. And uh, Let's go ahead and see if we can fix this. So same thing, let's just make this a smart filter and then we'll open it up. And the reason I make it a smart filter first is because it makes masking and changing things later a lot easier. And Topaz Photo AI does not have masking in it. So if you wanna do masking, you're gonna to have to do it inside of Photoshop. I'm excited to see what it says about this one. So images in focus, but severe noise. And I would be honestly surprised if it fixes this, especially the banding. If it fixes the banding, I will just, actually, that's not too bad. It's definitely, it's got some issues here. I don't know what's going on with this. It's like out of focus here. But if we zoom in, let's zoom in even further. It's hit or miss, it's not the greatest. Let's put the strength all the way and just see if it can fix that noise. Oh, it just looks horrible. That looks horrible, but Let's zoom out. That R5, man, that noise is disturbing. Okay, that is totally not usable. Let's bring back the strength. So it's not total AI. You do get a chance to manipulate some stuff and uh, that is doing a terrible job. Let's go back to the autopilot settings. So it's not totally fixed. Let's just save it and see if it looks different inside of Photoshop. Looks the same. This is a uh, tricky image, but I purposely chose this one because with the Canon R5, in astrophotography or anything where it's really dark, especially in the corners here, the lens that I'm using was a uh, has heavy vignetting around the edges here like that. I enabled profile corrections on this photo. If you don't want to deal with the banding, just disable profile corrections and it will help it significantly. I purposely enabled it so we could see what it could do, but it still is pretty bad. It didn't do this picture any good. Uh, I think it still looks just as bad. I would say it helps a little bit in the absolute blacks, but where there's color, not too great. Kind of fixed that banding though. So it's like a 50-50, some may call it a win, some may call it a loss. Moving on, it's a more tricky image. We have this puffin and if you zoom in, you can see it is totally not sharp. When you're shooting birds, especially puffins, minimum shutter speed, 1 hundredth of a second, anything shorter, this is 125 hundredth of a second, you're gonna have some motion blur. So 
let's go to uh, first some convert that and now we can Topaz photo AI I'm excited to see if it could do anything about this one none of them told me I needed to sharpen it yet so okay it says image is out of focus low noise all it's recommending is me to sharpen it you see in the bottom left now it's updated okay that did a pretty good job you can tell something's not right when you look in the eye here something's totally something kind of looks off but it definitely makes it look like it's not a motion blur image it kind of just looks like it's kind of cropped so far it's nothing that topaz uh can't fix with one of their standalone programs with sharpen and the noise i haven't had a problem needing to use both of the programs i will say though it is nice to have all of the images or all of the programs in one uh, hopefully they add some masking later i know a lot of people like to use that my friend sergius loves topaz he always shoots at like blue hour and he gets some amazing wildlife shots and we were talking about how upsetting he was about not having the masking and i told him just do it in photoshop because if you check this you can go to the smart filters mask here and let's make this unsharp i'm just going to show you a quick example see that's how you can mask inside of photoshop we'll just control z that and not bad i think it definitely helps it makes especially here if you, if you pixel peep you can tell it kind of looks weird but full size full size shot i think it looks fairly good i'm happy with that shot i really am that that kind of like makes me wonder if I could shoot lower shutter speeds and uh, deal with the motion blur later. All right, and this moose shot is a funny, funny story for you guys. First time I was ever scared of an animal. This thing fake charged me. Actually, not fake charged me. It fully charged me like five times and uh, I kept running back to the truck. And by the time I turned around, it, it was like, okay, you're not a threat. I'll turn around. Different than bears. You should... I never run from a bear. I'll stand my ground. But moose, I'm getting the heck out of there. Look at this rack. Not the biggest rack, but I don't want to get crushed by that. Enough of talking here. Let's go ahead and do this and open it inside of to Photo AI. Now, this should be interesting because there's no real subject. You can't see a face or anything. The moose is turned around here. Nothing too crazy all it's saying is it's saying that the image is sharp it doesn't look sharp it looks like it looks like it's out of focus honestly i mean that's what the remove noise is doing let's see if we can do anything here let's sharpen it topaz can't make the wildlife look at you i'll tell you that right now but let's see I don't know, it looks okay. You know, sometimes guys, your photos just suck. You wanna see a good moose shot from that night? Check this out. Let's scroll up here. Look at this. That was the same night, so sometimes your photos are good. So there's really nothing in the program could do. The photo just sucks. You could probably maybe just sharpen this. Let's just turn it all the way up and it just, helps a little bit here you can kind of mask that let's see what it looks like if we mask it so everything else is kind of super duper sharp but if we just click here control i and we'll just take a let's take a gradient and we'll just i want it the other way so i mean this is after that's before but alrighty guys, that's a quick rundown of Topaz Photo AI. I'm sure you're already familiar with other Topaz software, so I wasn't gonna go super in depth with it. And if you want to try out this Topaz AI, just go to topazlabs.com. Topaz doesn't sponsor me, just so you know. Okay, so once you log in, you can just go to my products and you'll see here Topaz Photo AI latest it's in a beta right now i might have an update for it but it's currently in beta just so you guys know one thing i don't like about topaz is this yearly update thing it gives you free updates for a year but it's like if you buy the program it should just give you updates forever hey topaz if you're watching i want to try out this program 
Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If you're watching this when Photo AI is already fully released, maybe it'll help you decide whether you want to buy the program or not. If you've already bought all three programs that they currently have, Topaz Sharpen, Denoise, and Gigapixel, then you can get the beta for free. If you want to get some wildlife shots like this, check out my recent nature photography gear that you need and uh, maybe you can see what lenses I use for shots like these. I'll link you guys to that and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.